Hey everybody, welcome to Mix Life. I'm here with Rick and Chris DVR is making a guest appearance. He's also working though, so we'll be forgiving of him being uh, you know, a weird guy in a with his, his cookie monster fucking image, right? Streaming from his weirdness going on. I'm what I'm known for is weird, so I'm I'm super glad that we have the Chris DVR drop in. It's actually quite the special day on Mix Life. It is, it is. So today we're talking more well, we're doing our 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 series of on flavor houses or whatever, and today we're gonna do flavor art. I'm pretty pumped about it. It's got they've got a lot of really great stuff. Uh, feel free if we don't hear if you don't hear something about a flavor that you really like or think should be mentioned or talked about, just holler in the chat and we will cover it when it's when it's reasonable to do so. Um, yeah. I don't know. You wanna start? You want me to start? Uh, sorry, like I I seem super distracted. I was just like actually logging on to YouTube to get into the chat. Um, oh, that's all good. I can. Um, I got a couple of notes before we even start about specific flavors. Uh, okay. A few of the things that I love like the most about flavor art flavors is that one, they're they're ultra forgiving. So in most cases, like eighty five to ninety five percent of their line, you can just approach with a one and a half to five percent range. And it will probably be reasonable. Like it'll be good. It won't be terrible. It shouldn't taste weird. Um, and it should accurately represent whatever's on the label, most of the time. Um, their tropicals being the the uh, exception. And I'll just get that elephant out of the room. Don't ever buy any of the pesh or their, their tropicals. They're honestly they're just not good. Their, their pineapple is awful. I don't like their um, passion fruit. It tastes good, but the throat hit is so violent to me that I can't even think about vaping it for more than like a bus before it just ruins my life. Yeah, their passion for it will take the pain off walls if you vape it near there. It's uh it's a hell of a thing. It's it's a good flavor, but and it's a decent passion fruit, but that throat hit is just aggressive as fuck. And then the mango the is cooking line, huh? The mango steen isn't awful. It's accurate because it's really, really floral, but I don't know. I don't I don't I'm not a mango steen fan either, so I know that some people actually enjoy it, but it's really not, not my bag. But um, but overall, they're really approachable. They're simple, and they're generally speaking pretty authentic to the name. Yeah, yeah. I feel like flavor art specifically. I think like there's some flavors that I'd stay away from. Like I, they're blackberry dressing up a wall. It's just it's just flowers and copper will tell you you have to use it at like 0.0001% and it's amazing or something, but it's just flowers. Don't buy their blackberry. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there are better blackberries and I, I probably would not suggest flavor arts blackberry for like a, a main flavor blackberry juice. Cause you're right. It is insanely potent and you have to use it at like less than 0.1% or 0.15 for it to actually be reasonable. And <laughs> It's blackberry apologism. I've this they is one percent dilution there. Yeah, it's yeah. a terrible trend of blackberry apologism, and quite frankly, I will not stand for it, especially on our show back after the break. Yeah, with uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's just other blackberries that do the job better, so I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, like I said. Um, but in general, no, I I like flavor, and I think that they generally, like you said, is pretty much what's on the bottle. They're generally pretty workable they're pretty consistent too like you were saying that as long as you don't go too high with them they usually won't taste bad um they have a lot of like fairly accurate flavors too which is good i i do feel like um sort of like as an overall statement of purpose like they're kind of terminally italian which is either a good thing or a bad thing depends on how you kind of look at it a lot of their bakeries like aren't as like trashy and full and sweet and like dap heavy as some of the like more domestic flavor houses i want to say yeah and and then there's the lemon the lemon controversy right <laughs> they put lemon in the, <laughs> the lemon dilemma and everything that's not i mean that's not entirely true but there's there's lemon in yeah. a few of their flavors that i would really love a lot more if they didn't have lemon they're still good flavors but sometimes the lemon makes it like kind of uh, go off the thing a bit. You know, their lemon is my favorite lemon. Their their lemon Sicily is. I love their lemon populous. Sicily. My biggest my biggest problem, and it's not on my list today. But my biggest problem with it is that it doesn't it doesn't hold up to a steam at all. Yeah, it dies quick. 
Yeah, I just feel like like they're not they're desserts and they're custards and like all that other stuff that has a lemon in it. Like I don't feel like they're bad flavors, but I think they're kind of a different take than at least what I'm looking at domestic market. Like my tastes don't run that way, and so I don't generally go that way with the with the flavor art custards. Yeah, there's a few of them too though, that are that are like best in class. Like a few of their desserts. So we can start. You guys got any tricks for covering up the lemon at all? Uh, start to like lemon more, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, or steep it longer. Um, like their their Nana's cake, I really would have loved a lot more if it didn't have lemon in it, because it's a really good cake flavor. But the lemon kind of trashes it for me, and you can't. And there's like an anise back note too. Yeah, that kind of has that weird, like, muddy kind of, like, anise lemon thing on the back end that gets a little bit tricky to deal with. Yeah, it's not, it, like I said, it's still a really nice flavor for what it is. I just, you know, I mean, when I'm trying to, like, approach maximum variety with what I have on hand, sometimes having the lemons, it can be a little tricky. I just like maximum trash, and it's kind of hard to get there with flavor art sometimes, but they do make a lot of very good flavors. They do. So... We'll start with fruit real quick. We can cover our very favorite, which I'm, or at least I'm going to assume that my favorite is probably the same as you. It is. Please tell the people. It's flavor of raspberry. If you guys don't own a gallon of this, you're doing it wrong. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's fucking good, all right? Like, it's it's a really bright raspberry. It's faintly floral, but not offensively floral. Um, you can kind of, I, I used to think that it was just too strong to like push really high into like the three, 4% range, but it, it is doable. And that's Rick's fault for teaching me that because, uh, it does get pretty floral after like 2%, but yeah. But if you like pair it up with something equally obnoxious, like a citrus or like rhubarb or anything that will kind of like distract you from the random floral bits, I, I really do like how that flavor fills in it higher percentages yeah but it's just consistently good it's got like a perfect level of sweetness it's tart um and it's a pretty accurate raspberry overall i think it's the most accurate raspberry standalone on the market right now it can get a little bit green it kind of it doesn't work in every single recipe but i tend to tailor the recipes i have it in to work with that flavor because i like it so much so the only time i have a hard time with it is when i'm trying to get a not real raspberry right like i'm trying to hit like raspberry candy or raspberry lemonade or something like that then i don't think flavor of raspberry is the right approach but um quick question from the chat does adding some em help with muting on the lemon in them i haven't tried that have you tried that it can but the problem with that I mean, obviously, is that you run into balance issues. If you're having to use EM to balance out your, to mute your lemon, you're going to be muting other stuff too. Yeah, you're going to mute everything else. So, yeah, it's it's feasible, but I mean, you're looking at like other, having to like rebalance again after the fact, which could be, you know. Yeah, it might work with perfect. like a, a straight custard or cream profile just because the EM is going to play fairly nice with those kind of muted, dull, like, cream flavors if you want to knock maybe some of the lemon out of like their custard and you don't want to add anything else to it it might work yeah absolutely it's definitely doable the custard has a little spice to it too don't you think i don't get any spiciness from their custard at all no i like their catalan cream a lot more than their normal custard yeah Yeah. oh so chris what is your favorite flavor art fruit uh, I would have to go with the uh, blood orange. You Bright, like versatile. Yeah. I do like it. It's a good orange. Um, it's not as thick as I would like, but I don't think any orange on the market is, is like has enough body. But it's a good orange. It's a decent orange. Um, I don't really get a blood orange vibe from it, though, because it's missing like that kind of like like edging towards grapefruit level of tartness that a real blood orange has. But it is a good orange flavor. It kind of reminds me of like the blood orange flavor you'd get in like a sparkling water or something. Like it's a little artificial and it's a little bit brighter. It doesn't remind me much of like actual citrus, but it's pretty solid. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Also, we totally lost our background noise, so we'll see if Chris Dibar is back uh, at some yeah, point. He dropped. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he got mad that we didn't like blood orange as much as he does. He's like, you don't like blood orange? Fuck you guys, I'm out. Done with you. <laughs> right, what's, what's your next one? Um, I'll stay on citrus. I am a big fan of their Florida Key Lime. Uh, right, I'll delete that one off my list here. 
Um, I like their Florida Key Lime. It's kind of a nice balance between sort of lime juicy without being like overly zesty. It's sweet. It has a little bit of body and I don't feel like it's incredibly harsh. I like um, their cold press and their distilled too. I think those are good limes, but I think that Florida Key Lime is a lot more workable if you're going to start mixing it with other fruits and stuff. Like it doesn't call attention to itself. No, I agree. Like exactly like you said, I like their cold press and they're distilled. Um, my two biggest problems with both of those other limes so is that they both suffer from pretty bad flavor fade over time. And key lime has a lot more staying power. Uh, like it, it, it'll hold up in a steep if it sits for more than a week or two, right? So. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily ever start out like obnoxiously bright and candy, but it also doesn't disappear. So yeah, it's a pretty good pretty good middle of the road like sort of juicier lime flavor. Yeah, and you can push it a little a little higher than you can the other yeah, two. Just, like, just crank that shit, like it, crank it to four, three, four, five percent even. And yeah, it's, it's still really good. It doesn't get like incredibly harsh too, which is always the problem with like lime and citrus flavors. Like it doesn't get to the point where it's just like throat like destruction. It's pretty mellow up that high. Yeah. So my next uh, my next favorite is black currant. Um, for a long time, it was like the only reasonable black currant and one of the only like dark berry fruits that was available um i said i think it's still a really good currant flavor it's got a nice like kind of jammy berry bottom end but it's still got like a bright like tart top note to it it, it will absolutely go floral and funky on you if you push it too high but uh, it's a super good like even just standalone or as a single fruit in cream slash juice or lemonade or whatever it's fucking good You guys yeah. use black at all? What's up, Chris? I, I dropped out there. Sorry, I was. Uh, which which lime were we talking about? Uh, we talked about Florida Key Lime for a bit there. Key yeah. Lime, okay. And then um, we we're talking about FA Black Current right now. Yeah, FA Black Current's like one of those weird, like sneaky flavors. It it's sweeter, more candy. It almost tastes like Swedish fish to me. Like it has that like red currant candy like lingonberry kind of vibe more than like an actual black currant which apparently is like chicken soup and cat piss put together but i'm not complaining <laughs> because i like black currant quite a bit uh fa's black currant yeah they're real like real black currants are really tart like and really sour if you don't sweeten them naturally so yeah currants a fun flavor to play around with there's a lot of crazy things but i really like black currant a lot it's probably yeah it's tied probably with raspberry for like right on my first place uh adam fleming you know there's not a lot of recipes with black currant it's i'm not uh, sure i not think sure. blood orange was my favorite because uh, the very first thing i was trying to mix when i got into mixing was a orange creamsicle and i just think that uh, in that application it works really well so. um another fruit that i really like from them is kind of a weird one so flavor it has a whole bunch of like flavors that are kind of one shots named after abstract concepts um and i feel like one that gets slept on a lot is aurora it's like a weird sparkling lime kind of flavor um it's a really good cocktail lime i don't really taste much beyond like kind of a sparkling limeade kind of thing but it does have like a little bit of whatever passes for fizziness in a vape uh it has like a good zest note to it it's a really good cocktail lime so that's another fruit flavor from them i'll use quite a bit yeah it's it's super fun i really like it a lot i don't use it as often as i used to. i used to i used to vape this stuff all the time last summer i have it i mean it's been cold yeah and i think technically it was like intended as more of a one shot so like that's another one that you can just crank up and vape by itself if you really want to yeah for sure um my next is kiwi um, I think it's like the only actually authentic kiwi on the market right now. It's, I mean, it's definitely fucking kiwi. It's pretty bright. It's sweet. You can crank it way the hell up if you want to. Um, yeah, it kind of tastes like strawberry kiwi to me. Like, I don't taste strawberry so good with anything else going on, but like, it kind of tastes like a kiwi strawberry flavor to me, especially up high. Really? Yeah. I've never, I've never noticed that. I mean, I'll have to do it. I'll, I'll have to crack. I, I've got like a four ounces of it. I'll have to do like a quick, like, I don't know, like 8% or something with it. You're noticing a very green trend to your guys' uh, favorite list here so far. 
Well, green is better than strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I have uh, either of these flavors. You don't have FA Kiwi? <laughs> uh, no. Get out of you, Definitely makers, getting right? it now. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's good. Down to 13 members. Okay. Moving get it. On. Get it. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm fucking with you, man. That's cool. Uh, and that was it. No, I really like kiwi, though. It's fun. It's a bright, really bright, sweet fruit. It's, yeah, ultra good. Uh, what do you got next? I have, like, five more. All right. Um, more they're, not really cool. they're a pair. It's really good. Um, one, so yeah, good. it's super juicy. It's pretty unobtrusive. It doesn't have, like, a super huge pear flavor if you keep it fairly low if you start to crank it up you can get some that tastes like an actual like pear out of it but what it's really useful for is juicing up anything kind of on the on the apple pear side of the house sneaking a little bit of it in really good shit i like using it in place of cactus i was using it in in place of cactus before cactus was cactus right like that was before it was a thing um I, I love their pear, and it, like you can add juiciness to almost anything if you're if you're cautious enough with it. So it's useful in the additive range, and it's a pretty damn good pear flavor as well. Do you get any pear texture when you crank that up? Not really. No, the only flavor that's ever had the pear texture is Flavora's, and to be honest with you, they only have the texture and the flavor, like but the harshness of. Uh, Flavora pear is unbearable. It's horrendous. I love you, Bryson. They, but they nailed the texture and, and the throat hit. Killed yeah, them. and the throat hit is violent. Um, Let's see. Forest fruit. Forest fruit is another, like... Oh, how did I miss that? Dude, it's it's a staple. Uh, I think you either kind of like forest fruit or you don't. Well, like doesn't it. that have their black currant in it? It's Maybe. probable. <laughs> Maybe. I don't really, I don't, I can't pick it out of it, like, distinctly. Yeah. Another uh, contest story. I think it was the one that Dave won. Um, the fruit mix for the first round, I put uh, forest fruit in there. And um, black currant from Flavor West. And the rules were kind of muddled. And I bought in the, the flavor from Flavor West or from Bull City, but they discontinued it. So I wasn't allowed to use it. And so I had to substitute Flavor Arts uh, Black Current. And then I was told later on that, oh, well, it's already in Forest Fruit. So you kind of just doubled up on the Black Current there. Didn't really work. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know. I can't confirm that. I have no idea. Um, but it is a really good mixed berry, I think. It's really bright, it's sweet. Forest Fruit, you can push pretty high without it getting floral or weird, unlike Harvest Berry. Um, it's cheaper counterpart, right? Yeah, it has some good tartness to it, too. It's overall, like, a really... Like, if somebody wants, like, berry-flavored and you don't want it to taste like Robitussin, you can just turn your brain off and throw forest fruit in and call it good. Yeah, for sure. Like, forest fruit's rock solid, and you can just, like... I mean, that Betty clone that's all over... all over everything or whatever that's just, like, 10% forest fruit and, like, 5% kept super sweet that, like, everybody fucking raves about. It's, you forgot the it. vanilla swirl. Yeah, they don't even know swirl at all. All swirl. All <laughs> swirl. All right. Just I mean, a little, have, little bit of forest fruit. Swirl fruit. Three more fruits. Uh, Fuji is like a staple. Now, there are other apples out on the market now, but for a long time, Fuji like really dominated the like apple anything. Like, Fuji was the thing to go to. Because Cap Double Apple was the only other one that was like actually decent. And then a lot of companies were using like Flavor West Red Apple. I'm kind of a I'm kind of an FA Fuji truther. I want to say like it's never really clicked for me. It kind of tastes like sweet apple skin. I really like it, but I don't like it as high as um, a lot of other people. Like I like it at like one or one and a half percent to like as an additive to other apples or pears, but I don't like it as a main flavor as much. But it it was like the it owned the apple market for the longest time. Yeah, like it's better than a lot of the other apples, especially ones that were available. And there's still like a whole bunch of people that swear by it for like a more realistic apple. But it always tasted a little skin heavy for me. I get, I get a bit of peel out of it. But I, I, you know, we've had this conversation probably like a thousand times where you pick up way more peel out of fruits uh, <laughs> and extracts than I, I do or anybody else. I've just picked it. Maybe it's just you. It's a problem. Yeah. It's everyone around you is the asshole. 
<laughs> Time for the MRI. See what see where the tumor's at. <laughs> I'm just with you. Uh, I, I still really like it. I still think it's a pretty approachable, reasonable apple, and it's totally usable. Um, and it's versatile. You can push it high. It gets a little harsh, but it's still really good. What do you got? It was a trick back in the day for turning that into a green apple. It seems I've forgotten um, that. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely bendable, or you can use it however. Yeah. Um, thoughts on F.A. Grapefruit? F.A. Grapefruit tastes kind of like jalapenos to me. Do you get that at all? It's really spicy. It's hot. Like I don't know. It's not yeah. hot. Like the spicy isn't the right word, but the tartness is almost off-putting enough that I can't take it. Yeah, like I feel like it also kind of sinks their citrus mix for me because that's supposed to have some uh, grapefruit in there too. And like, yeah, it just there's this weird like kind of savory almost jalapeno note in the back of it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, not jalapeno specifically, but I get like a. Like some heat out of that tartness, right? Like it's aggressive. <laughs> the great jalapeno. <laughs> I would kill for a jalapeno flavor that didn't have, you know, capsaicin in it. Turn into pepper spray. Uh, uh, well, I have. Um, FA I have, has bell pepper. FA does have bell pepper. I do have actually, their bell pepper. It's actually authentic. It's weird. Yeah. I don't like, know if it's actually safe to vape because it's part of their kitchen line. So don't, you know, whatever. I it's mean, your own risk. Props to them for making like a couple of weird flavors. I think they're black pepper too. I, dude, I fucking love their black yeah. pepper. I think it's fantastic. It's on my additives list. But, uh, apricot. Oh shit, I forgot apricot. Apricot is the truth. It's fucking good. All right. So not only is it like a super the like super great authentic apricot flavor, um, but you can use it to kind of like dumb down the musky overripeness that you get in stone fruit flavors from other companies. So like Cap Sweet Mango or fucking Capella's Nasty Overripe Juicy Peach. Um, or you can add it to their peaches um, to build a more robust, like fleshy peach. It's fucking amazing. Um, it's like a must have for any like stone fruit developer uh, or tropicals. Like, Cause you can use it to add like a nondescript uh, background to like brighter tropical flavors. So you get more meat. Like it's got a really good like fleshy uh, flavor texture. That's my last fruit. Yeah, it's also really good and dark, and it can like jam up a whole bunch of like compatible stone fruits. Like that was a trick for the longest time was like trying to maybe boost up a cherry and making it something that didn't suck. You could make it a little bit darker if you had some apricot, but it fit in pretty well. Yeah, definitely. All right, so that's my last fruit. Do you guys got any others? Like I said, my uh, FA line is pretty limited. I think you hit all of the top favorites there, pear and. Um, I got. They have a banana, it. don't they? I think their banana is very um, authentic, but it it needs help. It's uh, it just green. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of, it's a little green, and then uh, my biggest problem with it is that it steeps out a little, like a lot, so that. It, after like a week, it's just like a vaguely banana cream. Yeah, like I like it. It just doesn't remind me much of like any kind of like fun banana people would want in the recipe. Like I like the flavor, but it's a little green and it's a little weird. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I've like always I said, used it to make a more like authentic banana. Yeah, yeah, you can use it to help like add authenticity to a a less authentic banana. But yeah, I mean, before we had authentic bananas, you know, we. I mean, we still don't really. <laughs> Kind of, but I, don't I just know. got in the Perillum banana. I haven't cracked it open yet, but I heard, I've heard good things. I haven't fucked with any Perillum because I don't believe in giving Nick or Teen River my money anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just starting shit. Let's get in. Let's go in. Hot take. Nick Teen River fucking sucks. <laughs> Liquid wine is better. Than <laughs> Um, what, yeah, trying to move on rapidly. Uh, <laughs> you guys want to do boozes next? Oh, yeah, I don't, I didn't put down any of the boozes. Let's do some boozes. Okay. Um, my favorite booze from them is probably their whiskey flavor. It's, uh, nice. more of 
more of a scotch type whiskey. It doesn't have like that oak barrel char. It has more of like a peaty smokiness to it. It's, uh, warm. It's fairly full. It's fruity. This is a super fun flavor. I, I dig it. It has like some stone fruit kind of like nuance to it with a decent amount of booziness. It's pretty awesome. I'm really glad you said that because I really feel like F.A. Whiskey has been slept on for like way too long. Um, like everybody just went to TPA Kentucky Bourbon when they needed a whiskey flavor, which is a reasonable solution. But like F.A. Whiskey is a much brighter scotch. It's got that peat a little bit. I don't get any oak barrel either, but it's got a little kind of vague smokiness to the top note. Um, yeah. And it's got a really authentic, like just solid booze top note that you can use low to make other things like their Jamaican rum more boozy. Because the Jamaican rum I really love, but I don't get a lot of booze out of it. Yeah. I mean, or you can use it high and not be a coward. So, Well, I mean, you know what I mean. So that you don't fuck <laughs> up your Jamaican rum flavor, right? Like if you're trying to, you know, I don't know, be a weird attitude guy. Right? Fancy layering shit. That's um that that's something about flavor art I guess I didn't mention at the top of the show too. It's like a lot of the times when I use flavor art, uh they're a really good flavoring house for using for like finishing touches and like bending notes and stuff. Um because you have a lot of those flavors like the whiskey, like some of the other additives that we're gonna talk about that just like one percent or under can do some really cool like things on the margins of recipes too. Honestly, like whenever I have to think about where I need to go with like in the additive range, like I'm at 90%, like I almost always look to, to FA. Uh, Ray, we'll be getting to bakeries and creams in a bit. We'll cover Vienna cream. I'll add it to my list. It's actually pretty important. And I don't know why I didn't put it on there in the first place. Um, so that would put what Jamaican rum is next, yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a really good like sweet rum flavor, but... It, for me, it's kind of lacking in the boozy top note. Um, I think it's a it's a it's an excellent representation of a sweet spiced rum. Yeah, um, it's definitely but I can more like if you, you like bake ones. rum into like cakes or stuff like that, where the kind of the booze the booziness cooks off, but you're left with the rum flavor. Yeah, it it has like a really interesting kind of like oaky note to it too. I want to mm -hmm. say. Um, which isn't necessarily something you get out of like you'd think you'd want out of a rum, but like it's this weird combination of like butter rum and like cask aged whatever the hell, and it's pretty delicious overall. Yeah, I think it's really good. Um, uh, I am a fan of their brandy, but I guess I'm a bigger fan of using their liquid amber as a brandy lately. I've been doing that a whole lot on the advice of Emily, and I really, really like that. The coolest thing about that, too, is with the liquid amber, um, we're not to additives yet, but whatever, we'll just do it now, um, is that is that you can, you can like, hit a different range of booze, kind of, uh, depending on how much of it you use. Yeah, liquid, liquid amber gets busy. If you, if you keep it low, like, under half a percent, quarter of a percent, it can add, like, a stewed or cooked feeling that's, like, very faintly boozy to fruits, right? So if you're trying to do like pie fillings or compote uh, or something like that, if you stack it up in the like half a percent to 1% range, I get almost like a beer or cider kind of vibe. And then once you start pushing past that, when you start hitting like uh, with the whiskeys and bourbons and uh, like the, the stronger brandy booze note. Yeah, Look at how the liquid amber stacks up against their new um, candy wizard. Candy uh, Jam. I don't know. They're that was similar. Weird, that's a weird thought because you're going to Yeah, I know. Now. Totally random. Sorry. My body's not ready. <laughs> um, well, no, like I've used their, I mean, it's more of an added abuse for it, but I've, I was used to using their liquid amber at smaller percentages to make fruits deeper and darker primarily and make them maybe just a little bit stickier. But yeah, just turning it up and using it as like the booze note in a recipe, I've actually started to really enjoy doing that. So. Fucking liquid amber. <laughs> I love that stuff. That stuff's cool, man. Yeah. All right. I have their white wine. The only other boozy one I have of theirs doesn't really have that alcohol booze note to it at all. It tastes uh, like, but it's a great grape. You know, got that dry know. white wine finish on it. It kind of, it kind of tastes like brute champagne to me. Right, like that cheap bottle of brute from the grocery store you used to make mimosas with weird lesbians on Saturday morning. 
<laughs> that Andre son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's when I get out of my from Oregon. It's not. It's not a bad flavor, and it could totally be usable. I just haven't used it very much as a result of that. I I, I now want to buy that flavor because that's totally my scene. <laughs> that's what I'm West Coast. Yeah, West baby. Coast. <laughs> um. All right. So, is that it? Is yeah. there other boozes that I forgot? No. I that's know. all I got. Yeah, there's other boozes, but like I've fallen out of love with their gin. It's fine. It's mostly just juniper. Their sparkling wine just tastes kind of sour to me. It doesn't really do a champagne thing all that well. So I got a kind of funky toppy, like or a chemically top note from from their sparkling thing too. So. Oh, my cats are fighting. <laughs> all right. So desserts and creams. We'll just kind of lump them all into one. So my very favorite dessert flavor from them is probably their apple pie. Um, the apple itself is kind of faint and vague and it's really easy to cover up, but it's probably one of the best like pastry bases. It's a little lacking on like a thicker, more defined crust, but it's just a really good like kind of emulsified pie filling. It's got the cinnamon and the, uh, like brown sugar and, and uh, just pie filling in general. Right? I think yeah. it's good. It's a it's a it's an excellent pie base. Yeah, the the apple pie is really like honestly far and away the best a, a pie base out there if you don't want to think about it too much. Yeah, I mean if you don't want to layer six flavors to get your fucking thing, I do not have a hostage in my basement. That's my son in the kitchen. He's just he's a violent immigrant and I can't control him. So that's that. <laughs> no, it's not not a hostage because a hostage implies that you'd release them at some point for anything. It's more of a captive. He has yes. a captive in his basement. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you got? Do you got? Do you have any desserts on your list? Um, I don't really do too many desserts from them, honestly. Uh, I'll well, give the flavors I use in a bunch of other shit, right? Like I'm trying to think, like wow, their do their donut flavor that was uh, okay. Uh, I actually like Zeppelin better than Wow. Right, Wow yeah, had like a Zeppelin. weird fruit vibe to it, but Zeppelin just was just the, the fried thing, which I liked better than Joy. Um, yeah, Joy is just like greasy yeast, um, which is fine if you need a little bit as an additive or whatever, but yeah, yeah it's totally. definitely an additive. It's a greasy yeast additive. Their Zeppelin is really, really good. I just think that you got to really lean into that one to get it to show up in a mix. Yeah, you do have to kind of step on it a bit. Like you need to get two to three percent in there, um, which is good because Joy was really unforgiving, right? Like 0.15 and you're fucking like you yeah, they picked the wrong like, name for that. You know, it, it like should have been sadness or, or ruined. I can't count how many batches of whatever I ruined by putting Joy in there. Yeah, I mean, it's Joy is useful, but it's really, 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 really potent. Yeah, well, one one drop too many is too many. Uh, my next is meringue or meringue. Meringue. Not because I love the uh, flavor of meringue, but I think it's pretty useful to adding like, uh, like a thin sugar coating to like creams or whatever, right? So if you yeah, wanna, you've like, got to have it, right? If you want to add like a dusted so, sugar or a sweet, like, whatever top note to creams without fucking with anything else or using sweetener, I think meringue is the better choice. I use meringue as a sweetener in like creams and smoothies or milks. And you can use it as a milk itself, right? For people that do cereals, like meringue's kind of a requirement. Well, and it has some egginess to it, like real egginess, because if you push it over 2%, you start to get that sulfur. Uh, that's where I find it's I never push I don't meringue know, best in class. Um, next is custard, right? It's, uh, it's got a big downside in that you cannot get the lemon out of the custard but it's a super good lemon. So if you're doing lemon bakeries or lemon creams of any kind, like F.A. Custard is like the, basically a requirement to build on. Um, and for doing like lemon style bakeries, like it's a good lemon to use to build a, a, a lemon that won't fade out of your recipe over time. You know, I've found enough vanilla in that one and I really don't get the lemon anymore. I've really? used it in a few custard I, bases where so, you know, I've heard a few people say that, but I've never had like I can never not taste a lemon in it, even after like a month. I do not find it like custard spicy, Jared. Um, yeah, I don't really mess with 
I'm not a custard guy. Like I've never really had to drill down all that much. I do like their cattle and cream specifically for the spice note in there. Yeah, it's got a nice like kind of like cinnamonish top note to it. Yeah, I think, and I think it it really kind of comes closer to like a real creme brulee, right? So, um, yeah, and I think with the custard, right? So they have the normal custard. They have the normal. They have the custard premium, which we're not allowed to vape. I guess that's the kitchen line, so we don't really cover it. And then I think custard pie was uh, FA UK, like it was an inch. So custard pie was an FA UK release. Yeah. Um, and like the, I don't know what the actual difference is between custard and custard pie. The lemon seems a little more lemon, right? Like the lemon's a little brighter to me, but the lemon is definitely there. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's still pretty close to their regular custard. Doesn't have any crust or uh, bakery notes in it. None that I could pick out, but uh, I also didn't vape a whole ton of it because I'm not really like a custard guy. Like bakeries aren't really my range, you know, so. A um, couple of quick ones. Bourbon vanilla, I think it's a really excellent, like, straightforward dark vanilla, right? Or the uh, any of their vanillas. Like, they have yeah, vanilla. Madagascar's Yeah, Madagascar is... vanilla and then classic or whatever. Yeah. Um, I feel like the vanilla bourbon, though, is worth calling out because it really is kind of special for what it does. It's a darker, spicier vanilla flavor without a cream background, and there aren't that many of those. No, actually, that's yeah, exactly. That's why I chose like the bourbon vanilla um, out of those three to like to cover because it's a really good like dark spicy vanilla. Um, it doesn't have a lot of like the fresh bean vanilla flavor to it, but it's got just a really good ultra dark vanilla flavor that um, that isn't fucked with with creams or anything else. So if you need to, yeah, I mean, or you should like go forward with some other stuff. Um, but you don't want creams or dairies or egg or whatever else messing up your mojo. It's the one to use. Um, and uh, their vanilla gelato, which is their new one, um, I think is a really, it's actually, for me, it's almost closer to a custard than it is a gelato. Because um, it's got like a really dark, like kind of like butterscotch or like butterscotchy slash vanilla background to it that like, um, makes it not very much like a gelato at all, but I think it's really fucking delicious. I, it kind of reminds me of vanilla swirl. Like, maybe that's just because it doesn't have the dap to it or whatever, and it, like, runs maybe a little bit waxier rather than richer. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm sure the, 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 the lack of dike tones is a, a defining factor in it, but I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I find um, it weird that these companies are calling gelato flavors and they, they don't have any dicotones in them because i mean gelato is super rich and super thick and smooth and i mean that's totally counterintuitive i can't imagine that you can get there without the dap but just say yes to dap kids <laughs> just say yes <laughs> Um, no, we should probably shout out FA for being about their clear stream, whatever, no dap. Like, it, it's it's cool to have those options out there. Even if you don't partake in them, it's good to have people who give a shit about presenting dap-free flavors. But, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, as a, as a developer, too, like, having a whole range of flavors that I know I can go to that will be TPD compliant 100%, I don't have to fucking worry, is really, like, a huge huge deal so you know fa and flavora like i really appreciate the fact that they go so far to make sure that their shit stays on the clean side and i i know that some people disagree with their choices for uh not including their kitchen line flavors available for sale let's uh, not uh, whatever. we really let's want not. to get dave all worked up now before, before dave causes an international incident i think it's really good that they go so far to fucking keep that shit on Actually, no, we, we can do one more thing to piss off Dave. I like FA Cookie, and I don't care who knows it. Uh, oh, cookie's amazing. They were saying in the chat that FA, Rusty said, I think FA Cookie has been made obsolete by JF, and JF Cookie's very, very good. Uh, before I started using a lot of Cap Serial 27 for AP, I usually just used FA Cookie. I like it a lot more than Sugar Cookie by Capella. Fight me. Oh, I don't, I don't disagree with you. Death. I don't disagree I'm with gonna you. I'm going to suicide bomb you. What are you talking about? <laughs> you all heard it. James, I have some effect tomato. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. 
Uh, jungle flavors is better. It's fine. FA Cookie is better because it pisses Dave off. So that's that's why I vote for FA Cookie. All right. So we got two more real fast. They'll be quick though. Oba Oba. Um, before I discovered the the Swirlinati, uh, Oba Oba was the uh, was my answer to like nearly everything that I couldn't solve. Hail the swirl. Um, Whenever I couldn't get enough body into a recipe, whether it was a bakery or a tobacco or a candy or fruit, like Oba Oba can go on almost everything and add like depth and sweetness without adding dairy or any like overt strong flavoring. So uh, yeah, Oba Oba is like the king of, uh, or was was the king and is still the near king of um, adding depth to profile. And uh, I still use it when I don't want the vanilla swirl to vanilla of my shit. I don't always want that. Uh, Oba, Oba, is a, <laughs> Oba Oba is a lot of fun. Um, it's still a, a pretty good candy additive overall. And if for some reason you don't like vanilla swirl, I you're guess. Wrong. Yeah, you're first yeah. of all, you're wrong. You're wrong. Second of all, you should feel bad about yourself. And third of all, you can kind of use Oba Oba for the same effect. Um, but yeah, Oba Oba is cool. Does some cool then, things. I haven't used this in a really long time, but I used to use it all the time when like ice cream bases were like the thing, right? So Vienna cream is kind of like almost a requirement to build like a like a textured ice cream. There's a lot of ice cream flavors out there, like vanilla like Liquid Barnes, Flavor West, TPAs, you know, everybody's got a fucking well, vanilla ice cream. Wonder flavors just Vienna vanilla. cream can be really polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. You know, it's got yeah, a lot of thing, people that just hate it. it. If you want to use it, you have to be prepared to not touch it for like two or three weeks at least. Yeah. It freshly makes it taste like nail polish to me. Like it's just way too strong. It's got a really funky chemical note. That note does steep out. Absolutely. But um if you want like a real heavy ice cream textured, like Vienna cream is the only way to go. Yeah, Vienna cream is delicious if you don't have the overwhelming acetone thing. You give it some time to sit down. Like I still like it quite a bit for a sweet vanilla, like medium cream kind of flavor. Yeah, absolutely. Just as long as you're prepared to not fuck with it for a while. Like it has to sit. You just can't not steep it. So if you're a shake and vape person, like, don't fuck with Vienna cream. You'll hate it. Yeah. But uh, if you can be reasonably patient, like a normal human being. <laughs> uh, if Lewis, you can control Lewis, yourself. Lewis Patience Carl, is you're, not you're, normal. You are excluded from this day because <laughs> I knew you guys don't steep anything. I don't know, against your weird hobbit religion. If you cannot be a child and not touch your juice for two weeks, it's fucking delicious. Right. <laughs> the Vienna is glorious. All right, so we're through like all the... Like pretty uh, much the what about their cake. new cheesecake? Did you guys try that? I haven't gotten that one in yet. Uh, I tried it. It's it's a reasonable cheesecake. The strawberry kind of throws me off because it doesn't taste like strawberry to me. Um, I was just curious if it's because I'm a strawberry or or equal to Caps New York. Cheesecake I think it's as good, but the vague fruity note for me kind of throws it off a little. Yeah, like there's some strawberry in there, right? Yeah, and it, it's good. I think it, it tastes a lot like their juicy strawberry. Um, so it's not bad at why? all. Why? Why uh, put strawberry in there? They're just like the lemon, right? Why? Uh, I don't know. But I, I think I, it's yeah. <laughs> I think it's meant more to be like a one shot. Like it's like their chocolate glazed donut. Like they're trying I to get... take a little bit of the workout of you know mixing for some of the newer people. There's a yeah. lot of new people mixing right now, so having flavors like that available are really helpful. But yeah. like I just for me from my perspective, it's not as useful because the strawberry kind of takes away from me being able to add other shit to it. Right, and I mean, it's not like strawberries the hardest thing to figure out either. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm sometimes really it takes three strawberries to get there, but you know, it's strawberries. Go over, you can go over candy with it in a few minutes, Daniel. Uh, um, Oba Oba is like a marshmallow, basically. Like, if you're trying to pick a specific flavor that it has, because it's kind of got a weird, vague, not cream flavor, it's really more like a marshmallow. It's right. supposed to be like a European Skittle, right? Uh, Kind something of. like that. So it's, it's based off a street candy, yeah. right? Like a hand street candy that they have over there. So James Riviera, thoughts on their mint flavors, mild white winter. Um, mild winter is their peppermint, I want to say. Yeah, I really like that. I think it's peppermint. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. 
Yeah. Um, their their mints are all good. Uh, there's their peppermint tastes like pretty much every other peppermint. It's not as sweet as something like Capella peppermint, but it's good. It gets the job done. Um, I do like their spearmint quite a bit. It's not super super realistic or leafy, but it is pretty like restrained, and I like the balance between actual flavor and mentholation there. Um, I think they have like Arctic Winter or something that's like menthol. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, think so. I haven't tried it. I don't. I don't yeah. have Arctic winter. I have and in typical blast. FA fashion, they name them so that you have no idea what you're fucking buying. Uh, that's, well, that's not true. There's like usually <laughs> descriptions on the website, right? Yeah. Um, As, you know, peppermint. Well, it says uh, mild winter peppermint on it, right? Like does it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I just okay. can't remember off the top of my head which was which. Just going through the chat on missed questions. Any thoughts on FA Storm? Uh, that's a tobacco or something. Yeah, it's one of the weird. I don't, I it, I don't think I've ever actually touched it. I don't think I've messed with Storm. Let me look it up real quick. I have it, but I don't think I ever actually tried it. Yeah, it's a it's a spicy tobacco thing. Um, but I haven't I haven't fucked with it. We'll go over some of their other tobaccos though here in a minute. We only got about fifteen minutes left, so we got to pound these out, right? And like the thing that I love most about flavor or flavor art is that the next section, right? It's like the weird one-off additives that aren't really strong as main flavors, but you can do weird, cool shit with them, right? Uh, they have a, they have a, they also have a really reasonable, reasonable uh, florals selection, but I won't sit here and talk to like florals for like an hour. Uh, they can watch fifteen whatever. minutes just listing them off. But all their florals <laughs> are pretty good, with the exception of jasmine, can be kind of hard to work with. Um, and rose is a little challenging. And rose is rose is the worst challenge. Rose <laughs> hates it, so we'll just leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, monsoon. Oh. I don't. I don't monsoon think I actually... is one of their tobaccos. I want to say, and it has some like weirder kind of fruity notes. But for me, I guess the fruity notes and like the grassy notes from the tobacco kind of clashed a little bit. I didn't dig it all that much. Their lychee is kind of awful. Yeah, but the cappuccino is fine. For, is sort of awful. The cappuccino is fine. I like the cappuccino and the dark bean, the espresso, okay. But they're both really, dark really, 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 really strong. Yeah, um, like under half a percent or less, or you'll not have a good day. Probably. Uh, to me, and the rusty cheese said something about lemon Sicily. We did cover lemon Sicily earlier. Uh, I think it's a flavor we all agree is pretty good, but it fades pretty bad. Uh, yeah, so by saying the coffees or, are fantastic. Fantastic might be a stretch, but yeah, I mean their coffees are. Okay. I mean, if you like burnt popcorn, yes, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good coffee. They're, okay. they're strong. Coffees. Yeah, they're, okay, they're strong. But they're yeah. Really, really strong. Yeah, I hate whoever pointed out the burnt popcorn note in coffees because now I can't vape coffees anymore. Uh, uh, the only one I don't get that from is Wonder Flavors Brazilian, whatever. But it tastes like gas station coffee, a good gas station coffee. But uh, so on to the weird shit. You want to start with Black Fire? I love Black Fire. Black Fire tastes like kind of sweet, sweet campfire smoke, and I love it. It's great. Um, it does really good work, like adding some depth to like smoky notes and tobaccos. I've used it to sub in for like grilled stuff like it's just it's a delicious sweet smoke flavor kind of tastes like liquid smoke if you imagine it you can call, almost taste a, something a little hickory-ish it's delicious shit yeah no i love it it's really really cool stuff i think it's probably out of all of their additives my very favorite because it you can almost put it in a, like literally anything that you could even conceivably think about having at a campfire right so like whiskeys or drinks if you want to Beers. You can put it in a few bakeries, and it turns out little pretty interesting. S'mores or something? Hmm. Yeah, you can do it with s'mores, too. Uh, I did have a few s'mores recipes that went out that had uh, black fire in them. Um, Scott Miller said I you got I think I have that one. Shit. I have their uh, black of pipe, and that was like licking the bottom of an ashtray, so I stayed away from So anything. remember that F.A.'s tobaccos come from, like, the really old-school tobacco uh, standpoint, right? So when the industry started to move away from absolutes, like tobacco extraction for the purpose of flavoring was a really new process. Um, so a lot of them are really 
closer to like like hay, grass, dry tobacco. So they're not for everyone. I think that some of them are really good. Um, uh, namely, their seven leaves and their burley. The seven leaves is a little funky and floral, um, but I really like it. And I think it's pretty good. And their burley is really reasonable. Um, Soho is fine for people that like a really mild, like RY4 style tobacco approach, but not very much tobacco. You were about to say something. Oh, I was going to say, I actually have been struggling with F.A. Glory for the longest time because it's kind of peanutty. Um, uh -huh. And I really like the flavor to it. It's just always come down as a little bit harsh to me. So, like, maybe that's someplace you want to use some of their fantastic tobacco additives to kind of fill it out a little bit. But I do really like that peanutty taste. I like the tobacco note, Glory. Do you want the secret to fixing that? MTS. Oba, oba. Oba, oba. Jeez. Every time. <laughs> Oba Oba is like brilliant to fucking unfucked like weird dry tobaccos. <laughs> so they perfect. invented Oba Oba to fix their own tobaccos is what you're saying. <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> well, I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a totally non-traditional or a totally like more traditional. Like they set the standard for the traditional approach for tobacco to tobaccos, like going what, like 10 years ago or something like that. Right. So I know that the, the tobacco movement, overall in the flavor industry has changed a lot but um yeah i still think that a lot of them are perfectly viable and some people really still swear by them um i tried their desert ship i tried to like it i can't i tried really hard but it just tastes like dirty hay to me it's really the hay is like on i cannot get around it yeah that like i feel like fa tobaccos are kind of one of those things that you either like or you don't like i know they have a fairly big following but yeah they do tend to be a little bit grassy and like grassy ashy too yeah, which is and they do they do yeah. definitely have an ashy top note uh, in most cases <laughs> so for me is rotten nuts and old moldy moldy cookies i i wouldn't go that far daniel campbell i i think well, it's pretty mild I mean, as far as tobaccos go i don't know it tastes yeah, like i mean i would smell. say it's might not even be a tobacco except for they call it a tobacco it yeah, does have it is a it real is a tobacco, tobacco, tobacco in it for sure uh, FA's Max Blend is pretty nice. Yeah, it's a pretty decent, like, kind of like West TP, TPA Western style approach, right? Real, like, uh, put hair on your chest, fucking uh, tobacco. Approach it's gonna to make it. you work for it. They're Bad not tobacco. Yeah. All right. So next is a weird one. Bitter Wizard. Um, I like Bitter Wizard's ability to like remove uh, sweetness from a mix, right? as opposed to like adding bitter necessarily like it can like just dial back the level of sweetness overall yeah that's I, an um, interesting way to use it i've always tried to use it for contrast we were talking before the show and i don't know that i've successfully ever used bitter wizard so i have a uh, recipe for grilled peaches marscapone and honey that dave goaded me into making and i use some bitter wizard in there and it really does at low percentages, it does a good job of taking down some of that effectively sweet background mm -hmm. to kind of mellow out um, the, the sweetness from some of those recipes. And I do like it quite a bit for that. But yeah, it's kind of, you'll run into the one recipe out of 100 that really needs it. And it's the only thing that will fix that recipe. It's interesting stuff. Yeah, I know. But it is really like the only, like, it's the only approach if you want to remove sweetness without using another flavor to do so. Um, so the next is Candy Wizard. Um, I think it's really cool because it kind of adds like a, I really, on, I almost get more jammy sweetness out of it, right? Instead of um, like a super candy, right? It doesn't do hard candy type stuff. Um, it's like the gooey inside of a candy versus like the shell Sort of. Yeah, I don't get. I mean, maybe I haven't tried cranking it up yet, and maybe if you crank it up, you can get there. But, um, but yeah, so like I get, but I get that kind of like gooey, like compote style, like jammy sweetness out of it. Um, and I think it's really cool because it doesn't have a distinctive fruit flavor behind it, so you can use it in almost anything. I made this really cool gin uh, and lemon aid candy thing yesterday. Uh, MTS 
for the people that actually use that kind of stuff, um, I don't use it very often and only when I cannot, I just absolutely cannot beat the dryness out of a tobacco recipe um, or I don't get enough body out of it. It's just too thin. So MTS is just, it's a proprietary version of like TPA Smooth or Flavor West's Flavor Enhancer, um, both of which are just pure triacetin basically. Um, MTS is not just triacetin. I'm not privy to all of the other things that might be in it. Um, but it does a really good job of adding like a little bit of depth to your recipe, like a bit of body, make it not feel so thin. Body. Yeah, it works it's really to like blend things together too, right? Right. Well, I mean, that's what triacetin does, right? That's that's what triacetin is for. Yeah. It, it does work really well with those F8 tobaccos too. It's another thing where their yes. own additive works really well to fill out those tobaccos. So if you take like one of those dry kind of dirty tobaccos and add in some obo over to sweeten it and thicken it and some MDS to smooth it out, then you probably have a pretty good tobacco vape, but yeah. And then I don't have any others. We have a few minutes Way left. back Thanks. when somebody had mentioned that they were using MTS to uh, clean their coils without changing their cock. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like it I just gave me. I just got Forrest Whitaker. I just. Uh, <laughs> you just you just gave Koppel an aneurysm. I dig it. <laughs> that is absolutely completely unreasonable approach to cleaning your coils. MTS does not have anything in it that would accelerate cleaning your coils. So he's literally talking out of his ass. Whoever that is, you can come find me. I don't care. There's, there's, literally, there's literally nothing in MTS that would clean your coils. It is a clean flavor, so you could burn it, and it won't fuck up your coils. Um, like, so where is just... that? I, I, I think that was on Reddit, one of the uh, the wiki reviews. I have to go back and read that again and see if that's where it was at. Well, he's wrong. Or, really? really? Cleaning you're your watching, coils? You're fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably me. <laughs> on, on a rare occasion... Like, I've dripped a little VG on there just to keep everything from, like, fucking boiling or, like, turning super red hot while I'm trying to clean coils. But, like, frankly, people who clean their coils are cheap-ass motherfuckers, okay? This is my <laughs> hot take. People who I don't even have clean, coils anymore. I mean, you know, people I've who have get to clean the their coils instead of just taking them out and putting in fucking new ones are cheapskate motherfuckers. It costs you fucking a nickel to build a goddamn new coil. Just fucking make one. <laughs> Stop being a lazy cunt. Um, okay, on that note, uh, so Sour Wizard. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry. What percentage would you use Sour Wizard at? Um, because, like, we we're talking about it in the Zero. chat a little bit um, about how it's good for that kind of sour ish additive, but it is like it, it will meet your flavors over time and adds a little bit of tartness. Uh, probably if you're using it in a like fairly simple, short steeping recipe that you don't intend to keep a lot around all that much, I mean, one or two percent if you're just gonna shake and vape that shit in a day or two yeah one percent one and a half percent maybe two percent but it's gonna mute the fuck out of your shit at two percent um if you're gonna let it steep for a long time maybe half a percent maybe up to one percent if you really fucking need it i've never really found it that useful you know trying to make sour fruits or whatnot more sour just doesn't doesn't seem to work the way but you frankly know, like sour is kind of a, it's a it's a mixed bag right you're not going to really get sour sour and when you do kind of get that level of tartness out of the sour wizards it's going to start really destroying your coils because citric and malic acid are bad on coils who who is paying ten dollars from two coils hey, fancy ass like people who don't build and want like okay fancy coils. Well, if you're paying ten dollars for two coils i mean i'd rinse that fucker for like a year yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like, I that's my I coil budget that. for six months, guys. I, I bought like that fucking twenty dollar Daedalus jig, right? And I take my power drill and I make a fucking twenty feet or thirty feet of Clapton wire, and that's what that's it. It's not hard. I do it like once a month, and then I don't have to do it again. Oh, I so, quit making Claptons like a year ago. I don't. I, don't have time for any of that crap anymore. Well, I understand why people clean the their coils because the, the Daedalus jig makes it take like five minutes, right? To make a whole shit. I have a jig. Huh? I said I have a jig. I still clean my coil. It, it, Wait, you know, so you're, a minute you're telling me you're just, you're just lazy. I'm, yes, yes. Okay. I'm just that lazy. Because that's what I'm here. <laughs> and round wire, you know, just yeah. 
Yeah, I do round wire. Round wire, not even just food. Not even confidence anymore. But I mean, I got the uh, profile in. I haven't taken it off since I got it in. The vape mesh. Oh yeah, guys. I can send you a picture of that mesh stuff. It looked pretty dirty then. You might want to change it. Yeah, and uh, no, well, that was after a month. And that, did you see that cotton? It was still pristine. I have like a million pre-builds because some people thought it would be a cool idea to send me a whole bunch of them, but like I've never actually paid for them, so I don't, I don't know. If I was buying them, I guess I might have a different approach, but that's me, right? There's my hot take: build your own coils. Shit ain't hard. <laughs> Coil couple doesn't really pay for anything, guys. So no, it's true. I don't. Your coils off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just, just brush them off or rinse them or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you can order pit bills pretty cheap too, can't you? Though, like if you like shop around or whatever, like you don't have to pay ten bucks for two coils, do you? Like, is that really? Like, yeah. I, mean, I feel like probably... if we're gonna choose a point to like, if we're gonna choose a hill to die on, telling people not to use fancy coils is probably. probably I'm not telling not them not to. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't use MTS to clean your fucking coils. Right? That's that's really what set it all off, right? Using weird shit to clean your coils. <laughs> Using MTS, to, it's not going to do that. It's literally not doing anything. There's no way it's doing anything. It's impossible. All right. I don't have anything else. Sorry for my... Um, <laughs> my to to Coil rant. My mood is uh, just fucking anger all the time. Um, no, that's pretty much flavor art for us, I guess. Uh yeah, it was awesome to have you on the show, Chris DeVore, yeah, famous for mixer for of thanks, guys. sugar cookies. I appreciate. All right, good deal. All right, well, that's about it. We will be back. Oh, what are we going to do next week? What line do you want to do next week? Um, we can either we're do starting vape. Get, we're starting to get into the crazy lines now. Yeah, we can either do vape trainer or, cool. or uh, anything else. I'm going to have to do some more research on, and, and it, it ain't going to happen this week. So, uh, Or in aware. Yeah. Let's do Inaware next week, and then we'll do – that'll give us some more time okay, to kind of catch up the other ones. All right, so back for Inaware next week. Inaware will be a little shorter of a show, I think. There's not – their line – I mean yeah, – well, well, I mean, you know, it depends There's going to be a half-hour hot take about how they're not right? consistent with anything, and they reformulate without warning anymore. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a four minute long show of me bursting a blood vessel, yelling straight into the camera. Don't change your shit, motherfuckers. Right. All right. On that note, everybody have a great week. We will be back next Wednesday, same time. Cheers, motherfuckers. <laughs>